everyone, and welcome to the college basketball edition of ProLine, direct from Las Vegas. I'm John Cranton, joined by Vegas handicappers Jeff Sod and Zach Simony. Going to take a look at four college basketball games Thursday and Friday. First, we're going to start with our Twitter <coughs> question of the week. This is how you can get involved. Just send the ProLine panel any question. We'll try and answer it online or on the air. It's used on the show. We're going to put you into a drawing to win $100 of e-bonus points on jimprice.com. You can use that on any handicapper or any way you like on the site. And you can send a question by going to Google at Jim Feist, Google Plus at Jim Feist, Twitter at Jim Feist Sports, or Facebook at ProLine TV. This week's question comes from George Aikens of Atlanta, Georgia. He wants to know how much do you analyze the regular season games with respect to head-to-head -head play when assessing tournament matchups. Jeff? Well, it depends. Uh, if, if, uh, if a team that's uh, two teams pretty equal in talent and one of them just happened to win two close games during the regular season, it would be pretty difficult to win three straight against, uh, uh, you know, against a team that's pretty equal in talent to you. So that would be one time you might want to consider the team that lost both games. If you have uh, other teams that just uh, got blown out twice and just uh, just can't compare talent-wise, then you then it probably won't make much difference. You might want to go for the team to win three in a row. Uh, but uh, it just depends. And then we have uh, teams that are rivals. Uh, they, they might, you know, the, the, first, the first team, uh, one team won the first game, then, then, the, then the second team won the next game, and now they're playing again, and they're close in talent. You might go in with the revenge factor with the team that lost the last game. So it depends on the teams themselves. There's no really set uh, trend. I haven't seen any trends that it, it, uh, that it always, always take the team in double revenge or a team in single revenge or... So, but it just depends on the teams that are playing. How would you say? Yeah, with college basketball, the field is so large with 68 teams in the, the main tournament, and you have 20 to 30 in both the CBI and NIT, maybe a little bit less, but you're going to have over 100 teams in these uh, expanded tournaments, so you're going to have to draw some type of comparisons. But for the most part, you're not going to see a conference opponent face a conference opponent in these tournaments. That's one of the main keys that I like is that uh, they set this up so that you will not have one of those matchups in the first two rounds. When you get in the uh, extended rounds of Sweet 16 and beyond, that could be a possibility, but uh, these early rounds, that's not going to happen. So I don't really compare to what happens in conference play to that uh, for the regular season because it's just not going to happen. You're not going to have conference opponents. Um, and finding similarities with teams it's, I mean, you're going to have bad shooting, you're going to have poor free throw shooting, you're going to have all the same variables you have in conference play. So it's basically an eye test for me of what, where you see the line value, and that's that's what you need to be looking for is line value, not 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 a team's uh, strengths and weaknesses. All right, with respect to the conference tournaments kicking off, the, the two things that I look for regular season meetings would be rebounds and free throws. Rebounds, I can get a sense sometimes of a potential matchup, for instance, if one team has a significant edge and rebounds, particularly under the offensive glass. Uh, they could have an edge during conference tournament time. Uh, you know, Red Auerbach used to say, the guards get tired, but the big guys, you know, they don't get shorter. Exhibit A would be Kentucky with their tremendous height advantage. And then uh, with free throws, I look at how the team, if there was a three free throw disparity in the regular season meetings, and a lot of times the home teams can get an edge, even a huge edge, not all the time. But what that means is the referees could be given an edge to the home court and the home crowd. So I weigh that in when looking at tournament play, whether there was a disparity or not. One example would be the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Where during the regular season, you got Boise State and San Diego State, same records of 24-7, and seven, same conference records of 14-4 and four, tops. Uh, they met once during the regular season. Boise won the game easily by 15 points, 61-46. to 46. Look at the free throw edge for the game. 19 free throw attempts for Boise, the home team, only eight for San Diego State. So that's a plus 11. That was very close to the line. So when they're meeting in the conference tournament play, which is in Vegas, I would uh, negate that and, and expect a more of a closer game uh, because they had an edge. All right, let's get into uh, one of our first games on the docket. On Thursday, you got the SEC tournament has taken place in Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. It's Tennessee against Vanderbilt. Vandy, four and a half point favorite. It is only 181 <clears throat> miles separate these two uh, in-state rivals. They split the uh, two regular season meetings, although the road team was the one uh, who won. Tennessee won at Vandy, a six-point dog, 76-73. Vandy kind of gave it to him with just by going 17 of 30 from the free throw line. But the rematch at Tennessee, 
as he was a small favorite, and Vandy really played a good game, winning 73-65. to They were down at the half, 30-19, to and then had a terrific second half, 54-35. to So you've got a Tennessee team here. Jeff, they're <clears throat> not winning games, a 3-10 and run. They're not covering a 3-11 and spread run. Yeah, if you want to take a team in better form, it's obviously Vanderbilt here. Uh, Tennessee, that 5-8 and eight against the spread run, 3-10 and ten last 13 games. Uh, that overtime win in Vandy was February 11th, and they won last week against uh, uh, LSU. It was kind of a fluke. They sh shot 52 percent uh, compared to 40 percent for LSU. They came back to form on Saturday, lost by 11 at home in South Carolina, one of the worst teams in the conference. So in, in that game against South Carolina, they, they shot 35.6 percent. So uh, Vanderbilt won that rematch, I just said, February 26, 73-65. Uh, Commodores have, have been much better against the number this season, 16 and 12, compared to 10, 18 and 2 for Tennessee. Uh, guard uh, Josh Richardson leads Tennessee in points, assists, field goal percentage, and steals. Damian Jones leads Vandy in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, and blocks. Uh, this, this is one of those teams that we were just with the uh, we were talking about before. Teams that have played before, one is obviously uh, uh, in better form now. So uh, Vandy's on an 8 and 2 against a spread run. So this would be the time when you want to take. Vanderbilt because right now if they win this game they pretty much solidify an NIT bid so they have more to play for Tennessee doesn't have much to play for and uh, so I'll go with Vandy and this one John. Well Vandy uh, had a good season of 19 and 12 but they're really clicking right now five consecutive wins under fiery coach uh, Kevin Stallings nine and nine in the SEC but playing very well right now and the offense is very solid 103rd in the country in scoring their 28th in the nation in assists and they shoot over 47% as a team that's 35th in the country. So, uh, Zach, it's a pretty good offensive team with the Commodores there. Yeah, they shot the lights out uh, against Ole Miss on Saturday. It was one of my plays. But uh, this game is going to be interesting because right now you're seeing the triple value that, that you usually see in the NFL. This has been so much line value against Vanderbilt for the last two weeks that uh, the odds makers finally shifting it um, with Vandy being a four-and-a-half point favorite in this game. But Tennessee, if you remember this team last year, I know it's the coaching change and whatnot, but um, they still have Josh Richardson. I think Amari Moore is still out there, the big man. But uh, they were a senior junior laden team last year. Um, and they didn't have anything to play for at the same time last year, and then they went on that run, got that uh, play-in game, and then they went on that run in the March Madness tournament. But I think this is the time where a young team like Vanderbilt may, may struggle in a spot where they're actually favored in Tennessee. Josh Richardson, 6'6" with that wingspan that NBA uh, scouts love. I think it's like a seven, something crazy, seven-foot wingspan. But uh, he's a leader. And then in these type of uh, tournament games, you have to find those strong leaders on the court. I think Josh Richardson's play, um, even though they haven't looked great lately, I saw enough from them uh, a couple weeks ago against Kentucky where they held into the games. They're staying in some of these games, and it's just a matter of time uh, before that comes to uh, – play against the spread, and I think this is a good spot. Haven't laid off them for a couple weeks. Well, look, I'll take a look uh, at the total in this one. I like to look at tournament games under, especially after we play a couple of games because of defense. However, I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to look at a high-scoring game. you got Tennessee Dean, suspect on defense at time, four and one run over the total. And Vandy, uh, they can do so much. Fifth in the SEC in scoring their tops in the conference in three-point shooting and their tops in field goal shooting. Mentioned that they're 28th in the nation. And assists, they're on a three and one run over the total. The first two meetings between these teams both went over the total. So I'll go for the sweep here. Vandy, Tennessee, Thursday, over the total. All right, before we get to a Big 12 rivalry game between Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, I'm going to subscribe to Jim Feist's YouTube page. It's called Sports Betting. Just click on the link right above us. You'll get updates on pro line and free videos each day. Plus, if you want to go to jimfeist.com, just click on that basketball, the link at the bottom right of the of the page you're looking at, and it'll take you right to the site. You can get plays from Jeff, Zach, Jim Feist, and all the gang. 